So if you're looking to monitor and manage your soil health on your place, uh, there's two main types of ways you can do it. You can use a soil test to help track things like organic matter and some of your soil chemistry, or you can get out in the paddock with a spade and have a dig and have a look at the field aspects of soil health. So if you're looking to measure the physical health of your soil, there's a couple of simple field assessments that you can do to keep track of your soil's health. The first one is what we call an infiltration test. That's where we get an infiltrometer or a ring and we tap it into the ground, we pour water in and we see how well your soil is absorbing or infiltrating the water that's hitting it. This is a really important test and it tells you about how much porosity and how well structured your soil is. The higher the infiltration rate generally, the better your soil's health. Another way that you can measure soil health physically is by doing an aggregate strength test or aggregate stability test, where we look at the strength of an aggregate and how well it holds together when we place it in water. There are some other tools you can use for measuring the physical condition of your soil and these include things like a penetrometer or even doing a bulk density test. These require specialist equipment but they are useful as well for helping you understand the condition of your soil's physical health. When it comes to measuring those key soil chemical aspects of soil health, pH, exchangeable aluminium, salinity and sodicity, there's a number of ways that you can do it. You can use a soil test to measure pH, exchangeable aluminium, soil salinity and soil sodicity. So getting a standard agronomic test, you can find those numbers on your test and keep track of that aspect of your soil health using the test. You can also use the aggregate strength test and stability test to see whether you might have sodicity. Soils that have a high proportion of sodium in their clay, they're quite fragile and if you place a bit of that soil in water, it often disperses and goes cloudy. Your soil pH can also be measured in the paddock using a little field kit and that's an easy way to just keep an eye on things from year to year to see whether your pH is going down or stay, staying in your target range. When it comes to measuring soil biological health, there's a few ways you can do it, either with a soil test or out in the paddock. One way that you can measure soil microbes in the paddock is using a soil respiration test. And there's a few different kits out there. Basically, it measures the activity of your whole soil community and how much it is breathing off or respiring carbon dioxide as all the life in the soil eats and decomposes. So it's a good way to measure quickly and easily how active your soil is at any one time. Other ways you can measure soil biology in the paddock you could get a pair of undies and just stick them in the ground and see how long they take to rot down. This is kind of measuring how well your decomposing microbes, particularly the fungi, are active in your soil. Other ways you can measure soil biology is digging up cubes of soil with a spade and getting in there and looking at root depth, root volume and the health of the roots. Things like nodules on legumes, earthworm counts, dung beetle counts, these are all really useful ways you can assess soil biology out in the paddock in the field. If you're thinking about measuring soil biology using a lab test, there's a few options you can use. You can measure, of course, the soil organic carbon or the label carbon, which is that carbon that's, in, that's available for the microbes that season. There's some useful indicators on a soil test. But you can also get specialised microbial tests through specialised labs that actually measure the soil microbes in your soil. And the newer tests, which analyse DNA, can actually take a snapshot of your whole soil community. So there's a few labs out there that will measure, for example, the bacteria to fungi ratio, the biomass of your fungi or your bacteria, the diversity of the microbes in the soil, and in fact, the new DNA methods are able to look at the whole diversity of not just your microbes, but also your invertebrates that are living in that soil. So when it comes to measuring your soil biology in the field or with a soil biology test, one of the challenges is that the soil community is quite dynamic 
and from year to year, season to season, the community will change. For example, the amount of microbes that are active changes under moisture and temperature conditions. So when you're doing your monitoring of soil biology, it's really important to monitor at consistent seasonal times each year and take into account the fact that seasonal conditions will influence your results. So are soil biology tests useful for you if you're managing pastures in the Holbrook area? Well, soil biology tests have come a long way in the last 10 years, and they can help you really track the soil biological function in your topsoil. They can also now help you with things like seeing whether you've got a lot of soil-borne diseases that might be impacting on yield, or even if nutrients like phosphorus are cycling effectively for your topsoil. However, they are an early technology and I'm sure there'll be a lot more areas that they'll help you make specific management decisions as they get better and better and as the price comes down. But for now, using soil biology tests can help you get an understanding of your soil's biological function and the link between soil health, soil biology and production and profit on your place.